Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be proving to you guys that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. So, to do this proof, what I'm first going to do is start with a true statement that 0 is equal to 0, which is obviously a true statement because any number is equal to itself. Now from here, what I'm going to do is rewrite 0 on my left hand side as 20 minus 20 and rewrite the 0 on my right hand side as 25 minus 25. So now I get 20 minus 20 is equal to 25 minus 25 which is again a true statement because 20 minus 20 is 0 and 25 minus 25 is also 0. Now from here I'm going to rewrite 20 as 4 times 5. So now I get 4 times 5 minus 4 times 5 is equal to 25. I'm going to rewrite this as 5 times 5. So I get 4 times 5 minus 4 times 5 is equal to 5 times 5 minus 5 times 5. And now if I have something in the form a times b minus a times b is equal to b times b minus b times b, which is this form, well, notice how we can change the we can like simplify this by factoring out a greatest the greatest common factor. So for my left hand side, we have a greatest common factor of either a or b because both of them are in both terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as a times b minus b. Basically, I factored out a. Now, for my right-hand side, all we have is b because that's the only term for my right-hand side. So I'll just factor out b. So I get b times b minus b. So now in the case of this, for my left-hand side, I'm going to factor out 4. So I get 4 times 5 minus 5, which is equal to... For my right hand side, I'm going to factor out 5. So I get 5 times 5 minus 5. So now I have 4 times 5 minus 5 is equal to 5 times 5 minus 5. And what we can do over here is if I have something in the form a times b minus b is equal to b times b minus b, we'll notice how we can just cancel these two out, meaning that a is equal to b. So in this case, I have 4 times 5 minus 5 is equal to 5 times 5 minus 5. We divide both sides by 5 minus 5. And these two cancel out, these two cancel out, and I am left with 4 is equal to 5. Now, going back to our original equation, I said that I was going to prove that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, right? Well, what is 4 equal to? 4 is equal to 2 plus 2. So, I get 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. So I just proved that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. And now I know what you're thinking. This is mathematically, this is mathematically incorrect, right? How can 2 plus 2 equals 5 when 2 plus 2 is equal to 4? Well, look back here and try to figure out where I made an error. So the error is actually right here in this step where I divided both sides by 5 minus 5. So let me write this right here. I have 4 times 5 minus 5 is equal to 5 times 5 minus 5, right? Well, instead of just going on and dividing both sides by 5 minus 5, what is 5 minus 5? 5 minus 5 is equal to 0, right? So this is basically 4 times 0 is equal to 5 times 0. And then now, if I divide, if I try to divide both sides by 0, well, 0 divided by 0, that is not equal to 1. 0 divided by 0, that's indeterminate. So we can't, we can't actually cancel these out because if we cancel it out, we're implying that 0 divided by 0 is equal to 1, which is wrong. So that's actually where I made the mistake when I canceled out the 5 minus 5s. I wasn't allowed to do that because that's basically dividing 0 by 0, and that is against the laws of mathematics. So... This means that 2 plus 2 is not equal to 5. So, yeah. 
All right, so in this problem, I have eight to the power of 11 plus eight to the power of 11 plus eight to the power of 11 plus eight to the power of 11. So I wanna find the value of this. So for my solution, I'm gonna rewrite my equation, or sorry, my problem over here. So I, eight to the power of 11 plus eight to the power of 11 plus eight to the power of 11 plus eight to the power of 11. Now, notice how all of these terms here are the same. So I have all the same terms adding with each other. And if I have something in the form a to the power of b plus a to the power of b plus a to the power of b plus a to the power of b, I can simply just factor out a to the power of b from here. So I get a to the power of b times, well, a to the power of b divided by itself is 1. So I get a to the power of b times 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So in this case, I have a to the power of 11 plus itself 4 times. So I can factor out a to the power of 11. And I get a to the power of 11 times 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. And now 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 4. So I get a to the power of 11 times 4. Now from here, a to the power of 11, I can rewrite this as 2 to the power of 3. I'm gonna, all I did was rewrite 8 as 2 to the power of 3. And now 4, I can also rewrite this as a power of 2. 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. From here, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 11 that's going to equal 2 to the power of 3 times 11, which is equal to 2 to the power of 33, because 3 times 11 is 33. So I get 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 11, which is equal to 2 to the power of 33. So now I have 2 to the power of 33 times 2 squared. Now, the last part is fairly easy step. Because both of these bases are the same, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So over here, I have 2 to the power of 33 times 2 squared. I can think of a as 2, m as 33, and n as 2. So I can rewrite this as 2 to the power of 33 plus 2 which is equal to 2 to the power of 35. So this is my final answer, and I actually can't simplify this anymore because 2 to the power of 35 is a crazy big number. So this is my final answer. And also, the only way that this solving process could have been faster is in my first step over here. I took a whole three steps to rewrite 8 to the power of 11 plus itself 4 times as 8 to the power of 11 times 4, when I could have just saw that when it's the same term adding by itself x amount of times, it's just that term times x. So that's a faster way.